In this video, I'd like to explain the concept of chemical equilibrium. I emphasize the word chemical before the word equilibrium because many of us have our own idea of what the word equilibrium means. And dictionaries have a definition for equilibrium. But most of the time, those definitions, and even our own, are not accurate as far as what chemical equilibrium means. By definition, chemical equilibrium means that the forward rate of a reaction equals the reverse rate of a reaction. Here's an example of a chemical reaction that is in equilibrium, or sometimes we could use the words a reaction in equilibrium or an equilibrium reaction. It's a reaction between iron and thiocyanate to make iron thiocyanate and a little bit of water. Now we see two arrows, forward arrow and a reverse arrow. Well, that means it's a reaction in equilibrium. It also means that the forward rate equals the reverse rate of the reaction. I'd like to try to explain this further by using some animations. Before I show you this animation off to the right, here's the reaction between iron and thiocyanate to form iron thiocyanate and water, the exact reaction as I showed you above. Off to the right here, I'm going to show you an animation that tries to emphasize what happens when a reaction attains equilibrium. And hopefully this will help explain a little bit about this forward rate equals the reverse rate of reaction. Well, so let's take a listen. When iron-3 ions contact thiocyanate ions in solution, they can react to form a complex ion, iron thiocyanate. As the reaction proceeds, product molecules can react in the reverse direction to separate and reform the original ions. Eventually, the concentrations of products and reactants become constant. At this point, the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal, and the system is in a state of dynamic equilibrium. Here's another animation off to the left. This animation shows you what happens when we mix iron and thiocyanate. When a solution of iron 3 nitrate is added to a solution of sodium thiocyanate, the red-orange iron thiocyanate complex ion is formed. Although the reaction looks complete, substantial amounts of iron ion and thiocyanate ion remain unreacted in solution. What I'd also like to point out, which is very important to keep in mind, is that being in equilibrium, or when a reaction attains equilibrium, that does not force the product and the reactant concentrations to be equal. It's very important. Try to get away from the prefix equi to think all things are equal. The only thing that is equal is the forward and reverse rates of reaction, not the concentrations. I'd like to explain chemical equilibrium a little bit further using a graph. I also want to emphasize that chemical equilibrium does not force the concentrations of the product and reactants to be equal. Here's the reaction between iron and thiocyanate to form that reddish complex iron thiocyanate. And below is a coordinate axis. Y axis I'm going to label as the concentration. And the X axis I'm going to label as time. Mark off beginning T0 and concentration of 0. And here I'm going to mark off one, one molar concentration. What I want to show on this graph are how the concentrations of one reactant, thiocyanate, and one product, which I'm going to emphasize with red, the iron thiocyanate, how these two concentrations vary over time. That's not to say 
that the iron doesn't exist or the water doesn't exist. I'm just picking two items here, one product or one reactant and one product. So if we start off with thiocyanate at the beginning of the reaction of one molar, as time goes on, the thiocyanate is going to decrease. Concentration of thiocyanate decreases until equilibrium is reached. And once equilibrium is reached, the concentration of the thiocyanate remains constant. Now, on the other hand, as the reaction proceeds, the iron and thiocyanate is forming. And the concentration of the thiocyanate, of, excuse me, of the iron thiocyanate product continues to increase until equilibrium of the chemical reaction has been established. And I'm going to pick a point here in time that shows where the chemical reaction has reached equilibrium. When the concentrations of the product and the reactant are constant. Notice they are not the same. So at this point in time at TEQ or T equilibrium, the concentration of thiocyanate has decreased to some small amount, something way less than one, and the concentration of the product iron thiocyanate has increased to a value closer to one. We're not concerned with those exact values are right now, but the point I want to try to make here is that once this chemical reaction reaches equilibrium, the concentrations remain constant, but they don't have to be equal.